Now, Russia has continued to pour scorn over the UK government's claims that its agents were sent to Britain to poison the Skripals. At this morning's weekly briefing, the Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova accused Theresa May of being ignorant that after she said the Salisbury nerve agent attack was almost certainly carried out by Moscow. The Prime Minister of Britain said that Russia has technical resources experience of and motives for such an attack. Uh, we have a feeling that the head of British government is living in an information vacuum. Maybe she's not informed, maybe she's not told about many statements of the Russian leadership. It seems that she doesn't even read the press. Well, Sky's defence correspondent Alistair Bunkle is with me in the studio now. Um, Alistair, Russian spokesperson there, really mm -hmm. doubling down on their assistance that this is just hysteria from the UK. So where does that leave us? Yeah, and I mean, Russia sort of taking a very similar tack that they did six months ago when this story first emerged, when the two uh, scripples were found slumped on that bench. It has been roughly the same sort of tactic from Moscow ever since, one of denying any involvement but also raising questions uh, that they want answers to in the British investigation and by creating questions, thereby trying to create doubt amongst uh, people around the world. Um, this time around, I think if you are sitting in Downing Street, you would again feel that um, the whip hand is with you because yesterday four major countries um, signed a letter supporting the British, and not just the countries, the leaders, Emmanuel Macron, Angela Merkel, President Trump, Prime Minister Trudeau of Canada, all say that they agreed with British intelligence that this went close to the top uh, in Moscow. But if, um, if Russia continued to deny it, so what? I mean, where does it take us? Well, I mean, on the assumption that Russia will not seek to uh, cooperate and hand over the two suspects named by Scotland Yard, it takes us into something of a stalemate at the moment because I can't see any way that those two men will be either brought to justice or, at the very least, questioned by British authorities unless there is a change of uh, leadership in Moscow, and that's not going to happen uh, for many years now. So if we stay as it is... And we saw what happened with that with Litvinenko, didn't we? Uh, you saw what happened with Litvinenko. You're seeing what is happening with that right now in the case of the attempted assassination of the Montenegrin Prime Minister a couple of years ago. Again, two GRU agents um, named as uh, being behind that. Neither of them have... Uh, uh, face justice, they're being tried in absentia. What the British government will try and do is put political pressure on Moscow, um, firstly, and they'll do that by the United Nations, they'll do that for our allies. Whether or not they'll be able to levy further sanctions, maybe not so easy this time, given that so many sanctions were taken out last time and the expulsion of diplomats uh, last time round. They might find it harder to push that through. The other area that Britain will certainly try and retaliate is... Um, covertly. And I think we sort of saw a hint of this last night in Washington. Jeremy Fleming, the director of GCHQ, giving a public speech, and he said that the threat from Russia is real. And I think that Britain will try and use GCHQ, perhaps try and call in favours from their uh, their cousins in the NSA uh, in America, and try and it's hit back... Space. Yeah, try and an offensive programme against Russian intelligence, given that they will now be very confirmed and clear in their belief that they have had their security threat and this is the moment where they could try and hit back through cyberspace. And they can do that a number of ways, but they'll have to be very careful the way they do it. OK, Alistair, thank you. Now, the Lib Dem leader...